and studios are the working and living space for eminent artists Ranveer and Rashmi Kalika. Located in Kaladam, Kaladam stands for an art village, uh, Greater Noida, within a, a new institutional zone of 25 kilometers southeast of Delhi. Um, the brief was to design two identical buildings without windows that create an immersive environment. I didn't understand that first, why do they want no windows? They had recently uh, returned from England and I thought maybe something is wrong there in England that they want to close it or they feel very unsafe. Probably that also. But then I went to the place, now this is a photo montage, pardon me for that. But actually our environment, like Siddhar said earlier, our environment today looks, looks so cacophonic that one is tempted not to have too much of that. So they decided to close more, and um, which is a delight for an architect, I must sheepishly admit, because we don't like, I don't like, from the first year onward, in 1977, I never wanted to do elevations. I felt elevation emerge, they don't exist otherwise. This initial sketch of mine was inspired by Louis Kahn's Dwayne debit, fortified, closed, articulated um, like a sculpture and uh, you will see that what I mean by it. The site plan above shows the communities. The communities are made out of polygons and uh, the, the, their houses were the twin houses. Their houses were adjacent to each other with a small path cutting through a road, a small road though. And uh, below you see the model that shows how the twin houses react to this, create a gateway situation hardly any windows, sunk floor, this view is from the rear of the model and if you see the entire brief which was not very complex, actually I'm surprised, brief for residential work is never complex. What is, is your brief that you derive with the clients and arrive at? Now they had, if you see in the basement, a studio and their requirement is of course they splash with colors, Ranveer works a lot with colors and with video installations. Then the next one, which shows the red hatched one, so I'm sorry, the next one is the ground floor, um, and then left below is the mezzanine floor, which is actually the red hatched one on the top. It has a very strange geometry, which is the outcome of the entire vocabulary in this building. And the top floor, that's the first floor in a way, because we call this as a mezzanine, and we have this ground floor as a double hatch space. The top floor is a dwelling unit with a small courtyard. Now, uh, if you see the section uh, uh, right side bottom, you see this double height space and uh, um, what, what is interesting in this, the, the house is very tiny as against what we saw earlier. It's just on a 180 square yard plot and the area that is built is something like 20 odd feet by 40 feet. Um, it was very important in, in the design to establish a container that is workable, simple container and polarize or concentrate the services. So when we enter, we have straight away the lift, a small vestibule, lift and toilets as one plug-in and then the staircase which is, a, which is a delight for us because it's a sculptural intervention. You can see that in these images, left side the front facade with one large opening towards the garden which is 20 feet deep, rear garden is just 10 feet, side lanes are just 4 feet, so very very tiny, built on the footprint and as per regulations. Uh, right model shows how this sculptural staircase just wriggles through. And um, when I show the pictures I don't need actually to say much because I feel there is really not much except the play between light and the internal volumes. From outside you see the stoic quality of it with the incisions of light to illuminate certainly the darker spaces. On top you see the little, little courtyard and these two big blocks uh, which are the residential block, the staircase with the services. Rear um, view, now we go to the inside. The inside view shows how the light renders on the walls. Um, this is what I experienced then from the living room. Um, we developed by mistake many years back a staircase that had different balustrade heights. Here we used it to our benefit, I think, to show the force of the staircase that takes you up. This is the mezzanine which overlooks. I convinced the client we don't need a railing. Uh, they don't have small children. Uh, so we designed instead of that a large table as a sculpture which prevents from going through to the edge of this here. Uh, now the material that was used was a canvas for us. A canvas for the artist to splash on a canvas. Um, it was poorly constructed. A canvas that 
that, that lives through the day with the light and the shadow. Here you see how the reinforcement bars have been used to do the shuttering, which become actually the narrative of the process, the process of making the building. At places where you would touch the wall, we have cut these little, little bars, but other places the client allowed us to uh, keep it outside as well inside. But outside we had to prevent it from further corrosion, so we did a little bit of solution on top of it. Uh, all the walls, I should mention, are because they're inside concrete, outside concrete, and in North India, you know, it's hot. So the walls are double walls, 125 millimeter, three inches of insulation, 125, all load-bearing concrete wall, very light, flat slabs, no beams. Here you see how we switch over from the linear staircase, from basement to ground to mezzanine, to a pentagon that then cuts and almost pierces through through the entire space, and like some friend said, it's like, it's like bookmarks the space, and it's like a haiku. Um, right side, you see this little library shelf. We have reached now on the top floor. This is, this is how the top floor looks. Again, when you come out of the lift, they have a huge collection of art books, a small pantry. And once you step out on the, on, onto the small terrace, which is about 10 by 12 or 15 feet, you see actually your husband or respectively your wife. They had suggested to make a bridge across. I said, are you sure, guys? I don't think so, you want that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, this husband and wife seem to be a very interesting couple. Oh, of course. Uh -huh. So they live in two different houses. They live and work in two different houses. They are already my age. I see. So? Yes, I had heard of separate, you know, I had a professor. I had heard of separate bedrooms, but I hadn't heard of separate <laughs> houses. Know, here, here I They're can still tell married. You. Yeah, married. I'm also married. Oh. You know it, right? Great. Um, see, uh, I have a professor. He said something very cute in the first year. You know, plan bed together with window and all. Like we all draw bedrooms. Then suddenly he shows two single beds. After ten years, then he shows a cupboard between the two beds. And you remember, Eisenman did a little cut through two beds. I think he understood how it works. And then you jump further. There are two rooms of course, then two houses. So, so, but they love each other. They take care of each other. So, but they, please. but they both want no windows. No, they. But me, I didn't get. Uh, they, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because their art collection is very different, and they don't want to be looked into. They feel neighbors are very inquisitive, especially artists when they are working. They, they want a stillness. There, there are some windows. Yes, yes, on the ground floor where the living space is. Yeah. And that window is cut in such a way, it is cut through the staircase in front, that you see the garden. And the garden, we hope, will have grown by now. So because, you, you make a very beautiful building. And, and what happens if everyone in their, in their street and in their community build a house without windows? It has not happened so far in India. Trust me. Nobody wants this building once again. But interestingly, some artist came over. He said, who allowed you to do buildings without window? I would have loved uh, windowless also building. Nobody told me that works. But you know, once you do the first time. So, so if the neighbors came to you and said. Not the direct neighbor, but somebody No, the else. neighbors to this house yeah. said, we want, we want a house with no windows. Yeah. And then the, would you, at which point would you stop? I feel Siddharth's building with the big screen has the potential of negotiating other typologies. I like that. Because you can play with material, with construction systems. For example, these guys, Anita Dube, another very eminent architect, and Margaret is also probably in one of the halls, and they have built another building with louvers that close. So you have many iterations possible. But we have seen artists love to work in a closed kind of environment and live also a bit like that. Both are very introverted, in my opinion. Can you correctly show the personality of the uh, the building when we going through the kind of so it, it was very evident uh, the kind of personality and the architecture it matches and the kind of presentation we thought is is coming yeah. through correctly. So was, you can see that the first house I showed and these are diametrically opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Diametrically opposite people also. Yeah. So I guess that was a, I, I, I guess one of the the compliment uh, though we had a questions why no windows yeah. uh, at the time we question uh, the the kind of personality for which you are you must be designing yeah. we, we actually delivered it and came through also when in your presentation so it's in his video installation Ranbir uses about 2500 layers to give you an idea yeah.